next time you hear somebody talking about imposter syndrome, I want you to tell them just to shut up. Nobody's ever gonna come and give you a permission slip to be an entrepreneur. I should be a drug addict. That's actually like the, what the stats show. Welcome back, crafted entrepreneurs. So today we're going to talk about imposter syndrome. This is such a trendy word. And if you're talking to anybody and you're like, oh my gosh, like I just don't feel ready for this. You go imposter syndrome. Like we're so good at like labeling imposter syndrome. And I'm here to beg you all to stop talking about imposter syndrome. Why are we giving so much life to being an imposter when it's an absolute lie. I believe when you don't feel qualified for your calling to step into your business, to do the things, to post the things on social media, to go on the podcast, to network in the right rooms, to invest in yourself, you don't think you're worthy of that. All you've done, this is really important, all you've done is you've fallen into an agreement with the enemy because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And his number one tactic is getting you to doubt your ability. That's his number one tactic. And he uses it over and over again because why? It works. It works on me. It works on a lot of us. Because once we fall into agreement with that, guess what happens? With the agreement that I'm not worthy, that I'm not good enough, I wasn't made for this, blah, blah, blah. What happens is our mind starts to make a case for that. So if we state the fact that I you know, I'm an imposter. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to have this success. I don't deserve to make that kind of money. Well, our mind goes, yeah, you're right. You don't deserve that. And here's all the reasons why. You don't have an MBA. You don't know the right people. Your parents are, my mind will go to, you know, your dad's a drug addict and he still is in and out of jail. Your mom is, you know, on the struggle bus. Your brother's an addict. You know, like all of these reasons why like, you know, I should be a statistic. Like I should be a drug addict. That's actually like the, what the stats show is that I shouldn't be here talking to you guys today, sharing how I got out of that and how I am an overcomer. And if I were to look, you know, for the permission slip, I'd still be looking for it. I'd be broke. And you know, waiting on something that was never going to come. Nobody's ever gonna come and give you a permission slip to be an entrepreneur. You either want to pull your boots up, fall out of agreement with that lie from the enemy, and it just looks like this. You just go, you know what? I fall out of agreement with the lie that I'm not worthy. I fall out of agreement with the lie that I'm not meant to be here. I fall out of agreement with the lie that I'm meant to be in poverty. Fall out of agreement, and then you go, Lord, forgive me for ever being in agreement with that lie. And then all you need to do is replace it with the truth. So replace it with the truth. Well, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans for good, plans to prosper you and to give you a future full of hope. So that's a promise from God. And that is what you want to be in agreement with. I want to be in agreement with that promise. Okay, so if I truly believed that God has plans to prosper me, that he has a big future for me, full of hope, How much different do I go about looking at my business today? Well, I kind of go and say, hey, everything I touch is going to prosper. Even if I make a mistake today, which I will, because I'm human and I'm not perfect, God will find a way to turn it around for me because Romans 8, 28, that's another promise from God. He says that, you know, I'm going to make everything that you're going through right now. I'm going to turn it around for your good, Kayla, and for my glory. So just put your name in that. That's a promise for you. Things are going to happen today. There's going to be spiritual warfare. And the spiritual warfare that you're experiencing right now, if you're in alignment with that imposter syndrome, is right where the enemy wants you to be because you can't get anything done if you don't believe in yourself. If you don't believe that you're worthy of living a happy and prosperous life, you will never live out your calling. And again, that's what the enemy wants. What does God want for you? (laughs) He wants you to live out your purpose. He wants you to believe in yourself. He made you in his image. So he wants you to get out there and give your gifts. Read 1 Corinthians 12. Look at all the gifts that God gives you to be prosperous. Find out, well, what is the gift that I have? And I look at the gifts of the spirit and I go, I have a word of knowledge. So if I have the word of knowledge, I need to be teaching. So why am I on this podcast? Why do I have a YouTube? Why do I have courses out there and coaching programs? It's because I gotta share. I gotta share. I gotta share, share, share. That is my purpose. It is that simple. Don't overcomplicate it. 
So next time you hear somebody talking about imposter syndrome, I want you to tell them just to shut up. Be like, no, don't be bringing that stuff around me. And for those of you guys that know me IRL in real life, you know I will say that right to your face. I'll be like, stop, <laughs> hold up, take that back. I rebuke that. Even my kids, they know how to rebuke things. They'll, no, don't speak that over me. No, I don't want to be in agreement with that. So often we just talk about all of our struggles and we talk about all of the pain that we're in. We need to start talking about all the glory that's going to come from our story. We need to talk about all the good things that are on their way to us right now. We just have to become the person strong enough to handle it. Because when you're living in God's glory, okay, so you're really living out a testimony, there's a whole lot of responsibility that comes with that. Because at that level, you need to be making sure that, and you're not going to get it right 100% of the time, but you need to be making sure that you're being a good witness to people. You know, that you're constantly pointing people to Jesus and saying like, hey, like, okay, yeah, I've had success, but none of it would be possible without God. So, and he wants good things for you too. So seek him, it says in the Bible, seek the kingdom of God first and all else will be added to you. So if you start your day seeking the kingdom of God, this is a beautiful, beautiful picture I wanna give you. In Nehemiah, he is the cup bearer for the king. I don't know, I'm assuming he's like the guy that's over here like giving the wine to the king, <laughs> like making sure he has his drinks, okay? But it's not a low position. It's actually a very high position that you get, get to be that close to royalty, okay? But it's not like he's big to do. He's not the king. And he finds out that his hometown, Jerusalem, is in shambles. And he goes to the king and he prays first. And he says, like, tell me what to do, God. And he does exactly what God tells him to do. He asks the king for everything he needs to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And the king grants his wishes, gives him everything he needs to go back and build these walls. What's so crazy to me is like he gets there and it's not without opposition. He starts building the walls and these people come and they go like, no, I don't want you to build these walls. And he teaches the people who are, there's a lot of people rebuilding these walls, okay? Goldsmiths, servants, tax preparers, like all different types of people rebuilding the wall. And he says, with one hand, we're going to build up the wall. And with the other hand, you need to have a sword there and be ready to fight because people are coming to attack what you're trying to build. And you just need to understand that. I get up in the morning and I say, I got to put the armor of God on because I'm not in Delulu land. I realize <laughs> that there is a real darkness out there and I need to be on guard. I got to still do my thing. Right. And one of the things I do to have the sword in my hands is knowing the word of God, knowing the promises that God has for me. I don't want to be so filled up with the world's promises because it all relies on me. This is the problem I have with manifestation is that you got to feel good all the time and you always got to say the right things and you always got to do the right things. There's no room for grace in manifestation because you have to be perfect all the time and your energy has to be high and you have to be in the right frequency and blah, 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 blah. It is all on you. I don't want to live life like that. I can't live life like that. Like it's crushing to be perfect all the time. We cannot do it. And if you're living into that new age standard, you wonder why so many of them are confused and something looks a little off with them. It's because they're like sad and they're tired of trying to be perfect and be in this manifestation mood, okay? So over here, when you're living life with God, you're building your business and you have your sword up and you go like, listen, I'm also living in the spirit and going, God's protecting me. I'm going to do what I can do in my business and put the helmet of salvation on, put the belt of truth on, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace. I'm going to put all of that on and know that God's working and fighting on my behalf right now. Let God be your defender. Let God fight for you. There's so many instances of that in the Bible when God will fight for you as well. If you're meant to do something, go out today and know that God is making a way for you. Don't live into that imposter syndrome. You go around and you say, I'm meant to be here today. I'm meant to be on this podcast today. I'm meant to make these Instagram stories today. I'm meant to pitch my business today and I'm gonna do it with excellence and I'm gonna go in prepared. I'm gonna be diligent about having my ducks in a row when I go to pitch my business, when I go to serve my clients. I'm gonna do the best that I can. You don't wanna just be like, <laughs> everything's gonna be fine because God's got my back. God also gives you wisdom and he gives you that ability to live out your gifts, okay? So again, I'm gonna reiterate here for the last time, we do not play with imposter syndrome. That is a worldly thing that we no longer entertain. We fall out of agreement with the lie of being an imposter. If you're alive right now, put your hand over your heart. 
Feel your heart beating. Feel those lungs filling up with air. That, my friend, is a gift from God. You are alive. And you are alive for such a time as this to give out your gifts, to live out your calling, to love somebody today, and to believe in yourself. God believes in you. That's why you're still standing here. So go out there and do what you know only you can do in your business.